In the past, we've thrown up some, you know, some gift ideas around this time of the year, and they're good ideas. I mean, there's utility and they're budget friendly and they, there's evidence of consideration. But I'm going to assert right now, and we'll stand by it, that the most valuable budget gift that you can give is a practical tool that you have either restored yourself or you give the components and the opportunity to somebody you love to restore a tool that they will always use with their own hands and then think of you every time they pick it up and use it. So the example that comes to mind, of course, is an ax. It's the most glamorous example. It's got a lot of, you know, popularity right now. It's always had popularity. I mean, axes were perhaps the first tool and they might well be the last and most sort of vital tool. And so if you can give an ax, find a handle, find an ax head. This is a boy's ax head, probably two or two and a half pounds. That's my favorite ax. Here's a four pound. Heck, you could even do a sledgehammer because anything that you can put together, that you can gather up and bring to a a state of more well-maintained utility and then gift. I mean, what a win that is permanently. And then, like I said before, the second iteration of that concept is to give them the components and let them use their hands and sort of engage with craftsmanship in the way that it requires to make something that functions like new out of something that doesn't function anymore. I mean, think of the, the layers of satisfaction that can come with that. If you're going the kit route, if you're going to set them up to do this themselves, number one, try to approximately fit the handle size to the head of the axe. I mean, handles come in all sizes, axes come in all sizes, and you can save somebody a lot of effort by spending a little time on the fit. Number two, think about grain orientation. And ideally, the growth rings would be parallel to the wide axis of the handle, right? So that the strength, the maximum strength continues straight up the center line of the handle. And then number three, if you want the full meal deal, if you want the cherry on top, think about getting them one of our ax kits. We've been selling these things for a couple of years. We're just trying to sell our inventory and we're not going to replenish it. It was fun. It was worthwhile, but that was then and this is now. So we're selling them for less money than we ever have. Here's an example of three. I think my grandson put one together, Nate put one or two together. They're easy to do. They're going to work for a long time. And there's a lot of satisfaction in turning this into this in its own sheath. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. So go to our website, check it out. They don't cost much. They never did cost much and they cost even less now. And then start looking for the components of a Christmas gift that will never be forgotten and will be a point of contact between you and them that will be useful, perhaps even life-saving for somebody someday. So you might remember we did a video a few years ago about rehandling a little bitty ball peen hammer. I mean, half the size of that. So the upshot of this is that even a simple tool can turn into kind of a bit of an heirloom, maybe. And then let me broaden the boundaries on this a little further and say it almost doesn't matter what the tool is because in either doing it yourself and expending as much effort and care as you want, or sort of giving another person a baby step into craftsmanship so they can get the satisfaction of making that change in a piece of junk and turning it into something that they or someone they love will treasure, maybe giving them a way to think about a whole new aspect of their life, if I'm not overstating that. For someone who hasn't done anything with their hands, to make something you know, like that, that could put them on a different trajectory. And you probably have had as much experience as I have with the unpredictability of trajectories and whether a positive direction can have a real positive outcome. So I don't know if restoring a tool is that positive a direction, but I can't think of a downside to it. And if you're interested in that, and if you're interested in an ax sheath, go to our website. We've made it easy and they don't cost much. You never know. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work. Well, hey guys, it's Nate. Last summer, my brother-in-law was passing through town going on a camping trip and he borrowed my boy's ax and he really enjoyed it and he complimented it and really said like, oh, I wish I had one of those. That was a perfect ax for uh, the camping trip he did. And I just finished editing this video about this topic and 
I'm going to make him one. I'm going to take the advice uh, from my dad in this video, and I've got this uh, axe head here. This was the one in the video on his my dad's shop there, and I just swiped it. And this handle, which actually is a pretty close fit already, so it's kind of late right now. It's about 10, but I've been at my computer all day, and I'm going to see if I can get this done by midnight, including a sheath for it. So I grabbed a one of our kits here. So you've seen this before, but there's plenty of leather here. I'm gonna put this thing together and mail it. Let's see if I can get it done before midnight. I made the sheath a little too small, unfortunately. I think it'll stretch out, but if you're doing one of these, make it bigger than you think. You can always make it smaller. That's like the classic blunder, cutting something too small. Measure twice, <laughs> cut once. I like this kind of strap system on mine, so that's what I did for John. Well, that linseed oil was really old and really thick. It is about the consistency of molasses, and it'll be interesting um, how it dries and on here and what it feels like. But overall, I really like this axe. In the morning, I'll, I'm, when this glue is dry, I'm gonna cut this wedge off and put a steel one in there. I will put it back in the sheath and get it sent off uh, for my brother-in-law, John, who is really a great guy, and, in case you're keeping track, it is 11.35, so I will, uh, I met my goal. I got this done in two hours, and that was a nice break from working on my computer, so. I'm gonna detail it, get it all cleaned up, get it in the sheath. I'm not sure if you guys will get to see it at its final um, polished up state, but take my word for it, I'll make it look as good as I can. Have a good night, everyone.